grounds of Winthrop Gold. Liz, I feel the buzz. The players are coming in. Everybody wants to be a part of this event. That's right. The vibe is back this year. Even though it's going to be a little bit different, the format has changed drastically. Well, it's projected score still utilizing stroke plus distance, which is very painful. But this year, not exactly sure how the format is, but what I can tell you is if your projected score is, let's say, an 80 for an easy number, and Liz, you shoot a 75, you've carded a five under, and that's the only number that really matters. That's right, and you know, players and, uh, and audience alike will be able to go online and actually look at players' projected score as well as their current score. So it should, it's gonna be a very well-informed event because the format is different. It's a lot of numbers. So as long as you keep posting up on it, I think it'll probably play out pretty well. Well, from what I understand, we have no players in the field that will have higher than a 100 projected score. And I believe David Felberg at a projected 63 is the lowest in the field. So he's gonna have to shoot basically a 63, which is five under the car to par. That's right. Now that is a challenge. So it's going to, the tables are going to turn and some of those players that don't always get to see the limelight may just rise to the top. Well, now let's get over and talk to the TD, not only a Monday qualifying, but he's the co-TD of the event. And I believe that he is one of the uh, prime uh, chiefs over at this Golf United. Oh, he is the man running the show. This, we're talking about Adrian Southern. Let's get over and see exactly what Adrian Southern has to say because he is the man in charge. Well, what a beautiful day here, Monday at the USDGC. I've run down Adrian Southern. He is the co-TD at this year's event. Adrian, how are things starting to unfold here? Uh, really interesting. We had a great turnout today. A lot of people enthusiastic to qualify for this year's USDGC Performance Edition. Right, and now, Performance ahead. Edition. Now, I, I want you to take our audience into a little bit in depth about what the Performance Edition means and what they can expect to see out of some of the players this week. Uh, it's really simple, really. We use a bunch of, uh, we, we basically generate a projected score based on skill level, uh, the course layout, uh, to let everybody know what they're expected to shoot. We call that their projected score. Projected score, all right. And then they can find this information on your website. Uh, yes, they can look uh, throughout the week on USDGC. We'll be posting information about how this works, uh, a little bit more about where it came from, and you can follow it live in our scoring app uh, throughout the tournament. All right, great. Well, we will be looking forward to that. Now, let's say a player, give us a scenario. Let's say, let's talk about John Smith. John Smith is projected to shoot a 75. John Smith goes out and shoots a 69. What does he walk away with? Let's see if I can do the math on that. Uh, well, that would be six under. Um, so everything is relative to his projected score. He's really just trying to best uh, what we've put out there for him to be. All right. Um, so that's what we call his performance for the day, and that's what we compare with each player uh, to determine uh, not only qualifiers today, but the winner of the championship this year. That's right. This is 2011, the performance edition of the United States Disc Golf Championship. Adrian Southern, I'm glad you got a chance to explain to the audience what's going on with this tournament. We hope to I'd be asking you questions all week long. Thank you very much. Well, I, I don't think Adrian... Uh, <sighs> has got too much of a challenge, but I hope he's up for crunching numbers because he is really going to be crunching numbers all weekend long. You bet. I mean, he said, again, it's kind of coming in how he expected. He has been working on this for many years, so, I mean, it's Seems his like chance to shine. he's got it under control. Well, we're going to do something a little different now. We're going to get out. We're going to follow a group for a couple of holes. Here's some live action from Monday qualifying. Well, we are at the infamous Winthrop Gold. That's I'm right, Billy. I tell you what, it's beautiful day out here today. Oh, it's magnificent. We are out on hole number six, Liz, and can you feel the tension from these guys trying to qualify for the U.S. DGC? Oh, yeah, this is their one day to try to make this happen, and I mean, they can go as many rounds as they're able to, but I don't know if they're going to have time for many more past this. Well, you know, we, we told you up front, $50 to play, $25 for every time after that, and we've got a special group here. We've got Zach Newhouse, whose projected score is 76. That's right, along with Cooper Arnold with the same projected score. Well, Andrew Kirkner with a projected score of 82. And Jamie Clark just one behind him at 83. So, I mean, really anything can happen with this projected score system. Well, it looks like right now, if you can come in under par, you're going to be in. Uh, one under or even is the bubble right now the last time we left the house. And this is just a great group. These guys are looking forward. The wind is down right now.
and they're as much enjoying everybody else's action, it seems like, as their own action. They're just really taking it in, Liz. Oh, yeah, that's right. And you know, what hole are we on? We're on the beach hole. I tell you, it's a great day. <laughs> well, we've got about 72 degrees, a very light wind right now. And we're going to pick this group up. We're going to follow them hole six and hole seven as these guys try to make their dream come true and qualify for the USDGC. And it looks like making his way to the tee, that's Zach Newhouse. That's right. This hole is 371 feet. It's it's nearly level. It's only down two feet. That's just because the green is just just below the level here. OB water to the left. Well, the big thing here, Liz, is they dropped a tree in. That's a good looking shot by Zach. He's going to have a, a fairly decent hot putt, but they dropped a tee in about 40 feet off the tee pad right in the power hazard line. And this is a new shot for everybody that took the hazard line, at least. Oh, yeah. This is not a gimme hyzer anymore. This is you have to stretch a hyzer out and get it to finish. That's a little right. Oh, well, he's safe, but he's well short, Billy. Well, he got past that tree, so it's not going to block him out on his next hyzer shot end of the beach. And fortunately, he'll have a decent up. That's right. This is Cooper Arnold now. Wow, he's got some power on that disc. Oh, Cooper's got a good looking great. shot. That's just got to hook up. Here it comes, Oh, yeah, Liz. that's going to maybe land on the beach. Oh, it's trying to get, oh, it is. It's on the sand. Down on the beach for Cooper Arnold. Not better than that, Billy. Well, Jamie Clark coming up to the tee now. And that was Andrew Kirkner that threw that got just past the tree. Here's Jamie Clark. Jamie Clark, a proud member of the Deaf Disc Golf Association. Good looking That's right, shot. Good shot, about three quarters up the fairway. Well, we're going to follow this group down. This is a group trying to make their dream come true Monday afternoon qualifying. Well, I'm not sure if Andrew's out. Looks like Cooper's making. Oh, nope, no, Jamie. No, that's Jamie. Jamie just realized that uh, Andrew Kirkner's out now. Andrew Kirkner has a tricky little approach shot here because he has got to stick it on the beach or leave himself some sort of a tester putt. Well, you don't want to hazard her out too early here because he is a skinny little green. I like it, Liz. It's up, it's coming in fast. It better hit something. Ooh. That was a run right there. He came in on the pro side, hit the sand. He's got himself an easy three. Made me gasp. All right, Jamie throwing a relatively uh, easy shot, just going three quarters up the fairway, playing this part for a par three. Well, relatively easy, but he does have that ceiling to deal with, and that is something that is going to come. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's exactly how you want to play this hole. He left himself a 20 foot putt. Well, Zach Newhouse choosing to lay up. He's going to take his three. He's happy with that. Well, all right, as they make their way up to the green, I mean, a few of them left themselves tester putts, but there is that one great shot that's parked. Oh, yeah, Cooper Arnold just absolutely put it up there in the beach. Now, here's Jamie Clark. This is 4-3. Yep, just finishing it up here. It is dangerous because you're looking at water. I mean, that water's 10 feet behind the basket. Oh, just a little. You know, the, the par here is 68. Uh, projected score of 83 would be 15 others. So a three on that would have been like a birdie for him. A great bid there. Now moving in around back, and how about this? Cooper not getting to putt yet. Here comes Andrew Kirtner. This is 4-3 right here. He's projected 82, so this could be big for him. You're right, he's feeling comfortable. I mean, he, if he misses the putt, it's only gonna not make it. It's not gonna go in the water. A solid three right there, and now Cooper Arnold, who's projected 76, along with Zach Newhouse. He's oh, yeah, he's happy to have this birdie. Money, oh, that's a birdie. That's a two in any projected score right there. Great shot by Cooper. Zach going to move in, tap his par. We're going to have a birdie, two pars, and a bogey from this group. We're going to follow this group over to the bamboo hole next. This is Monday afternoon qualifying. Last chance, boys. Oh well, boy, this is the bamboo hole, Billy. This hole is famous around the disc golfing scene. Well, it started out Lattice and Zeb Campbell and the guys over on the East Coast, uh, they have really made it something special. It used to be what we call just a little boring hole. It's, oh yeah, It's right, one of boring. my favorite holes. Now there's a big Horkin hyzer. That worked, didn't it? Well, right. that's an opportunity right there to get Cooper back to back birdies. And oh, that's yeah. big. That's huge right through this stretch, especially. Zach Newhouse, I'm sure he's wishing he could get this. It's 270 feet. Oh, Zach's after my heart. This is Billy's favorite shot, and I have hit the basket three times with this. Oh, boy, time. I don't know about this. What are you, what are you calling? I'm calling this a good-looking shot. He's in the mouth. He doesn't have, quite have the arm, but he had the quarterance. He's got himself just at the circle's edge putt. All right, we got Andrew Kirkner up on the uh, pad now. Looks like he's going to try and just pure it right down the heart, Liz. 
Well, you know, the gap is, it's a generous gap. It's 270 feet. Players, if they can handle the wind, keep it low, keep it down. Well, it's generous. It's 15 oh. feet wide, and that is not what you're looking for. That's got to get inside. It's if he gets like inside, he's, he's okay. Oh, no. Wow, I think he hit the second to last piece of bamboo there. But he's got himself a solid birdie putt and no room for comment on the card. And now Jamie Clark to the tee. Again, oh, got a it's bad gotta, wind shear, Liz. Yeah, it's got to get up and over. Hopefully it'll land in the middle so he has an approach. All right, not a bad approach. Good looking shot from this group trying to qualify here on Monday afternoon at the US DGC. Jamie Clark up now. Oh yeah, you know, he's the furthest out, but definitely not a bad shot. He get, he left himself in the gap. He left an open putt. Well, he's got a pure look, and this is a big putt. I'd call this more of a chip, actually. That's oh look. boy, it's up. Oh boy, it's just hit off the front left of that cage. That was a spectacular run. That was a good try. He did get him some metal. Oh boy, look at Zach. He is just barely on the inside. Well, he he knows. The summer is the shot on this whole anything up and over pancakes. Oh yeah, it's a calm wind. Definitely wants the two fell out the back side. Went in on the left side, came out on the back right side. That had all the chance to stay in. Oh boy, look at Andrew Kirkner walking up to his shot. He, on the way down, he knew how lucky he got. That bamboo saved him a stroke. I don't think he stroke. knew how lucky he was. <laughs> there was only one or two poles left, Liz. To keep him from going OB, there was no doubt he was heading OB. Oh, yeah, he's ready to, to get a two on number seven. You're sitting pretty for number eight. Well, Andrew's at 82 projected score. This would be huge for him. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's thinking about it. Oh, it's up. Mm. And he draws metal. I tell you, we want to hear some chains up here. Well, the man that knows how to birdie projected to shoot a 76. He's red hot. He's wearing the red hat. That's Cooper Arnold. This is for back to back birdies, Liz. Okay, that's right. I mean, our best performance thus far, Billy, is negative eight by Dave Wiggins performance score. And I think if uh, Cooper keeps at this rate, he's going to be challenging Wiggins score. Well, we've got five in. This is the Monday qualifying. We're going to try and get around and let you hear from some of these guys that are in currently. The bubble right now is, I believe, either even or one under. This is Monday qualifying from the USDGC. I'm Billy Crump. I'm Liz Carr. And we are Clash DVD. Let's go see what Billy Crump and Jonathan Poole can tell us about this year's United States Disc Golf Championship. Well, I'm here with Jonathan Poole. And Jonathan, last time we got together, man, I asked you some tough questions. Uh, we're out here actually at the USDGC, and I feel the vibe. Do you feel the vibe still? I mean. Oh, yeah, I feel it. You know, we, uh, we did an interview here last year, and, uh, you know, I think I remember saying that uh, I can't imagine being anywhere else this time of year, and uh, I can't imagine being anywhere else this time of year. Well, it's Monday qualifying, and you know, we've got a lot of players out here. David Wiggins has been out here trying to qualify. Jeremy Colin, a world-class player, is out here Wiggy, trying to qualify. Wiggy shredded at 50, what, 59? 59, he shot him in eight down. He was in the lead, but he's now in third, and I believe our boy Bill Jacobson might be holding up the bubble at three down. Who's <laughs> great round for Bill out there right as well. Uh, so, you know, what are you expecting this week? I mean, you're expecting the same kind of action. It looks to me like nothing's really that, that different. Well, it looks and feels like it should, you know, and that's what we, uh, we hope for. We want the players to get the same experience that every other player has enjoyed throughout our previous 12 years. Um, you know, it's a little bit smaller field, which we, you know, that's by design. You know, we knew the rounds would probably take a little bit longer. So we set up qualifying so that we'd have a little bit smaller rounds, uh, smaller groups. So we're looking at, you know, probably 120 or so, 130 instead of one, almost 190. Um, so I think that just, that makes a lot of things easier. You know, get that train back to the station a little earlier and, uh, you know, good clinics in the evening, got some good teaching, got a lot of excitement going on uh, already for that. There's a buzz on campus about being able to see these boys well, teach. The, the clinics are really drawing a huge buzz, not just on the campus, but in the disc golfing community. I mean, I'm hearing people say they're gonna drive in for the Wednesday clinic with Dave or the Friday clinic with Kenny. You know, what is it that, that you think these players are going to be able to do to help these guys? Well, you know, with the average player, you know, your average recreational players, like the guys on, on campus or, you know, a lot of players out there, you want to play. You know, you want to you want to get better. You want to get out there and actually do it, not just watch it. And, um, you know, we've always tried to sell disc golf and, and sell the whole concept by showcasing the world's best. And that has worked to a certain extent. But the, the difference here is, everybody wants to get better 
you know, and so I honestly believe that this is something we should have been doing all along. Um, and I would imagine we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do our best to get it right this first time through. Got a stage set up, sound, the whole nine yards. I would imagine we're gonna do this every year because the response was immediately better um, in terms of, yeah, I wanna come check that out. Cause they're, you know, you tell them it's free, it's an intimate setting. You're gonna learn, you know, how to grip it, how to throw it, how to think, how to play the game, all kinds of different things that they want to know. You know, that, that is a direct benefit to them. Whereas the other, it's just entertainment. Well, how, how are you able to get Ken Climo and Barry Schultz and David Felberg and even Avery Jenkins to give up their time and to come over? And some of those guys are even participating in the event. I mean, is that an end of a thing or is that are those guys just that cool? Well, you know, um, you know, Ken and Dave and Barry all, you know, said that they were committed to helping out one way or the other. Um, Past champions, all three. Long ago, you know, they want to be here. You know, they're champions. They, they understand how much it means to us. And I think they believe in what this championship has, has meant, not just to them, but to disc golf uh, in general. Um, I know these were some big decisions, and they were hard for all of us to, to embrace, you know, just to absorb, much less embrace. And, um, you know, I really feel like the tide has, has turned is the phrase that I've been using. You know, there are a lot of people, you know, you look at the guys that are here, they're stoked and ready to go. Well, and Avery calls out of the blue and says, I want to be a part. I'm a distance champ. How can I help? And we, you know, figured something out for Avery, but it's got to feel good for those top notch players to come at you and say, how can I help? How can I be a part? Oh yeah, it does. Well, I mean, they, they know, I mean, you know, it's, it's obviously tough to not have, uh, you know, that big crowning event at the end of the year. And for these guys that have, that have poured out their hearts and their, uh, their labors and their wallets trying to travel around all year to not have the payday waiting at the end of the year. Um, you know, it's disappointing and I understand that. Um, but, you know, we're certainly glad uh, to have them here and I think they're going to see something special. I think they're going to feel something special and I think they're going to be reminded that we are still moving forward. You know, this is going to be every bit as good for disc golf as it's ever been and this is going to get us to a whole nother level. So well, I think they're actually going to help make it special and enhance it, which is what, you know, all you could hope for from some of your star team guys oh, yeah, in well, the sport. I hope, uh, I hope some people who, who didn't make it I hope they regret it a little bit. You know, I kind of, you know, we work so hard. I, mean, I guess I say that on behalf of everybody who's been out here busting their butt to get this place into shape. You know, I mean, we're going to deliver this, the experience. I mean, the product is there. And uh, if you're here, man, we, we appreciate it. We're glad you're here. If you're not here for whatever reason, that's cool. But, you know, this is, this is the United States Disc Golf Championship. It's going to be something special. Well, that's Jonathan Poole, the event coordinator. He's excited. We're all excited. And the juices are flowing. Everybody on the grounds can't wait till Wednesday morning. We'll be here all week long till the last putt drops at the US DGC. Well, the day is coming to an end. A lot of these players have left, but Liz was lucky enough to run down a couple of these guys trying to qualify. And we believe we've got one on the bubble and one for sure in. We've tracked down John Rindleman. John, where are you coming from? Charlotte, North Carolina. I tell you, there's a lot of Charlotte boys out there. Oh, yeah. What brought you all down here? 30-minute drive. I figured I'd come give it a shot. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So how did it go out there for you today? Did Not you have a good so time? Well. No? It was a good time, though. It was a good time. Is it going to keep you from playing disc golf? Nope. Nope? You coming back out? Yeah, man. I'm going to cheer my boy Kevin on. All right. He made it in, right? I hope so. All right. Well, it looks like he's got a good chance. John Rilleman, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Well, we've just tracked down Rick Black, another boy from Charlotte. I tell you what, you guys have a massive representation here this week. Yeah, for a lot of us, you just come down here and volunteer, and so this is our chance to actually get into the championship pool, so. That's awesome, did you make it in? No, I was on the bubble for a while, but I got knocked out. So are you gonna volunteer? Uh, yeah, we'll be down here this week doing some work whenever I can. All right, well, we hope to see you out there. You wanna be a spotter, a cart driver? Uh, whatever they need to help with, so. Awesome, well, thanks so much, Rick Black. We appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Well, all right, we've tracked down Anthony Gale. You're sitting on the bubble right now, Ant. I'm a little nervous, yeah. So you, right now, it's like you're in. You can't go back out and put up a better number. There are still people out there. Are you nervous? Are you worried? I mean, I'm nervous. I'm worried. I'm excited. It's not like it's every day that I'm stuck in a situation like this. So I'm just going to try to go back and practice a little bit and <laughs> not hang around. It's a little nerve wracking trying to watch people come in. Oh, I bet. So, you know, your, your performance score was what? what? What were you under today? I actually shot a 76. Okay. Uh, and you're projected? I, my projected was 80. I was actually playing qu quite well till I got to 888 and then tried to be a hero. And oh, no. Heroes die. Where are you from? Aren't you from around here? Don't you know this? Yes, I know better. That's, oh, that boy. Was, 
That was the thing I was thinking to myself when I was throwing on, uh, I was like, <laughs> I really shouldn't do this. But um, there, was, there was a tactical advantage, but it wound up kind of biting me and I was able to kind of pull it together a little bit and managed to get in on the line. So we'll, we'll I know see what happens. Everyone that's local is pulling for you to get in. You're right on the bubble. That. And uh, you know, we wish you the best. We hope everybody, uh, I don't know, I hope your performance is the best. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Thanks, Ant. Well, all right, Kevin Tritton, feeling pretty good about your sixth performance score there? I'm, uh, I'm feeling good that the fact that I was out here and was able to play. I mean, six under is, is good. It's a tough course, you know. How many times did you play it? Uh, second. This was my second second round out here today. All right. And uh, at what point during the first round did you think, like, this isn't going to work anymore? When it was probably about quarter to two and took a 10 on 888 and was like, uh, I think I might have to go try again. So yeah, immediate turnaround absolutely. after 888, huh? That, well, that's one hole that gets everybody out here. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now you've got, uh, I mean, it looks like you're in. It looks like you're doing good. Sit back and wait. Where are you from, Kevin? Uh, here in Charlotte. Charlotte, so Charlotte. you should know this place pretty good then. Yeah, we get down here. I mean, I'm glad we get the we don't get the opportunity to play with the ropes up and to play, you know, the tournament conditions all the time, but it's it's here, it's right down the street, so it's a backyard course. Well, by the looks of it, you'll be able to play it all week next week here at the USDGC. Keep Way to go, Kevin. Thanks. All right, I've been able to catch up with uh, David Wiggins Jr. here. He is qualified uh, today. I believe you shot your performance score was a? Uh, 59 was the score I shot, and uh, my projected score was a 67. So I'm under at about eight strokes. Under at eight strokes, okay. Now, the bubble we're hearing right now is one or two strokes under the performance level. I, three strokes under the performance level, so you should be feeling comfortable about getting in. Why are you playing on Monday? Did you not qualify at another event? No, I wasn't able to get in anywhere else. It's just, it's really tough this year with how they did the handicapping and stuff like that. And um, it worlds, I think, was the closest time I came to qualifying. Oh, I got boy. 11th place, but I was still two strokes out of qualifying. So oh, I'm here just today. two strokes, huh? Yeah. Well, how's the course treating you so far today as you uh, made your way through it earlier this morning? Pretty good. I played uh, pretty consistent. Didn't go for anything too crazy. Kept it in bounds. All right, we look forward to seeing your scores all week long. I hope you will follow the coverage as well as you out there. Well, it has been a long day for Mr. Zach Newhouse standing next to me, but you made it in, man. I did, I did. I uh, luckily saved the par on hole 18 to take the last spot, so. The last spot, now that means your performance score was a? Uh, six under. Six under, yeah. that puts your projected score at a? 76. 76, yep. all right, so good shooting out there. Yeah, it wasn't as uh, as good as I hoped. I had played really well through the first probably 10 or 12 holes and then fell apart a little bit near the end, but we held on. <laughs> you guys held on well. We're definitely glad to see you in there. I know you were making a lot of people up here pretty nervous. Everybody was looking over their shoulders. Where's Zach Newhouse at, thinking <laughs> you're gonna get in? So where are you from, Zach? Uh, just in South Charlotte, in Indian Trail. Um, all right. So I get to play down here quite a bit and came down on Wednesday, got in one practice round before qualifying, so. Does that mean you get to go home every night this week and <laughs> sleep in your own bed? I do get to sleep in my own bed. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about it. All right, well, Zach Newhouse, you're playing all week. Thank you. Well, it's been a big day, Monday qualifying. Liz, we've got the official results, and then more than five players are gonna get in. That's right, this is the performance edition. There's actually seven people getting in with that three-way tie for the last spot. How exciting. Well, we'll look at the board out of Kansas, Brett Burgess, Projected score of 83, shot a 70, 13 under par. He leads the pack. Yeah, by quite a bit right now. Uh, Charlie Coleman, our recent amateur uh, champion down in the PDGA Championships, his projected score is 75. He shot a 65. That's a net 10 under par for the weekend. Or awesome. For the qualifying well, round. He's in for the whole week. Phil Arthur, a little controversy coming in late, just making it in, goes out, plays his round anyway. Cards a beautiful 57 for nine down. He's in the event for the week. Way to go, Phil. All right, the, our tie with David Wiggins Jr. Mike Hamaka. Kevin Tritton. Oh, I'm sorry, David Wiggins Jr. He's actually sitting alone at eight under for the performance. Well, David projected at 67, came in at 59. He did that early this morning. He walked around this afternoon with his dad who couldn't quite get in. David will be back Wednesday to play. And Mike Hamaka out of North Carolina, Kevin Tritton and Zachary Newhouse all getting in with 66s. You can see here the projected score of 87 for Kevin Tritton. 
76 for Zachary Newhouse, and 93 for Mike Hamica. But they're all sitting at 600 par. They'll all be playing this week. That's right. It's a different format all week long. you got to pay attention online. There's a lot of things that are different. But I tell you what, there's seven guys right there that are real happy. Well, the one thing you need to know about at home, the only number you need to care about is this number right here, the performance number. And right down here to six, those are the guys getting in. Now, if Brett Burgess can come out and he can fire a 70 with his 83, he's going to love that first day. He could be on the lead card. Well, that's right, Billy. Everybody has an opportunity to have a great score and get themselves on the top of the leaderboard this week. It's a whole new format. It's a whole new game. It's still Winthrop Gold. And it's the USDGC Performance Edition. We'll be out here all week long. This is Monday qualifying. We hope you've enjoyed it. These are your seven players that are going to be added to the field. We're getting close to 130 players, and we'll be here all week long at the USDGC.com for the last putt drops. Mm -hmm.